Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you are. My name is Jay Eve Marie and welcome back to another episode of our Soul Podcast. The first episode of this year and of this second season. We made it back, guys. Now, the topic for today is Know Thyself. Now, in the last episode of our last season, the topic was, who are you? In that episode, we talked about a culmination of things that make up the whole person and the idea that in order to change who you are, it starts with all of the little things like the habits and the perspectives and your responses. In order to change who you are as a person, these are the things that make you up. So these are the things that need to be changed. So the topic for today is before you can change certain aspects of yourself, you must first know who you are and what these aspects are. Therefore, know thyself. Yet, I want to take it a little bit deeper than just changing into this ideal version of yourself. It's important to know yourself not just to change, it's just to merely exist, exist with a peace. Now, how do you actually go about trying to discover who you are? Well, in the same way that you discover anything else, you would go through trial and error. What you want to do is you want to put yourself in the position to experience different things and be aware of how you are reacting to these things. How do you react? How does it feel? Is that how you want to react emotionally? What behaviors are you inhibiting in this? I'm sorry, exhibiting, not inhibiting. What behaviors are you exhibiting in these circumstances? Now, as you take a step back and you look at these situations more objectively and you analyze these things, you will start to notice these cause and effects in your personality. When certain things happen, you react in a certain way. You respond in a certain way. And when you're able to ask yourself why, then you're able to look a little bit deeper into yourself, into your own programming which is one of the reasons it is so important to put yourself in position to experience different things. For example, how do you know what it is you like at a coffee or a tea shop? Well, if you have never been to a coffee or tea shop, you have to try out enough things to know, enough things on the menu to know what is for you and what is not for you. Life is kind of like that menu, and we are constantly interacting with it. There are so many options, so many things available to us, yet once we get so locked in on that one thing that we think is what is for us, sometimes we don't try to, we don't try anything else on the menu. We don't attempt to look at things in a different way and change our perspective. And sometimes all that requires is just picking something else. Now, once we put ourselves in the environment to try something new, we then get to observe our new behaviors and our new reactions to that thing. And if we di- if we discover something that we actually like more, then we can decide that that thing is actually for us. And we now have the option to choose that thing over something else that doesn't quite fit as well or we don't want as much, which in this case would be the original coffee or tea or order that we would have just come in and ordered if it was something that we're just used to doing, right? Again, now through these trial and error, we're making all of these discoveries. We have this new awareness about ourselves and this awareness it gives us the option to choose to live a life that is mo- that is beneficial and more aligned with who we believe we want to be. Yet, in order to do that, again, we have to decide to shift gears a little bit, to shift our perspective, to try something new. Now, as explained in this last episode of the last season, 
as you continue to choose these new things in these new ways consistently in alignment with this other being that you are trying to begin you are trying to be you are slowly shifting the many little aspects of yourself therefore changing the programming of your persona therefore changing your personality as a whole so it can't so just to explain it can't just be one one it can't be a one-off situation where i'm going to decide to do something different today but i'm going to go back to routine tomorrow or it has to be something consistent it's consistency consistency is what changes the person it's great to make that discovery where you realize some when you realize that things can be different in your life Yet, in order to actually change yourself and change your life around you, you have to choose that thing over the old programming. So, what does this all mean and how do we go about this? Well, first, you definitely want to recognize your own little pieces for what they are and why they are. These are your habits, your perspectives, your reactions, and all the other little things that are encompassed in that. Next, you want to test yourself. Put yourself in a new environment to see how you react. How do you respond? What do you like? What don't you like? And the last thing you want to choose. Decide not only what you do and don't like, but what you truly feel is for you and where do you need healthy boundaries? Is this thing in alignment with the person that I want to be? No? Okay, I'm going to separate from that. Is this pulling me closer to who I want to be? Perfect. Then I'm going to incorporate more of that in my life because that feels like that is in alignment. So that is just a very general overview, but through this little mini process, It's something that you can take and you can repeat over and over in almost every situation so you could really analyze yourself. Because remember, we are discovering new things about the world, but these things already existed. The real discovery is what is happening within us. It's us realizing these things about ourselves in the world. So in terms of knowing yourself and going through trial and error, I'm going to give you guys a little example. Um, Something that happened with me personally. So in the past, I've always considered myself a pretty disciplined person in almost every area except for time. I will will admit that. Um, I have always been... (laughs) Time has never really been my strong suit in the past. Um... However, I was someone who was working multiple jobs. I went to school at the same time. I would have multiple side hustles. I was always doing something. And I eventually stopped participating in these things. And I decided to join a boot camp. And the boot camp that I joined, it would require me to spend about 72 hours a week studying and coding. Now, coming from the background that I just explained, I didn't see this as a problem. So when I joined this boot camp, I was shown so many things about my own habits and emotional reactions that I realized one simple fact. Being a hard worker does not equate to being disciplined. Again, being a hard worker does not equate to being disciplined. You can work hard you could be someone with an extreme like great work ethic yet at the same time you are not organized enough to truly be disciplined and that's where the bottleneck was for me so seeing as I was someone who was involved in so many things I just assumed I had the the capability to perform in this area yet that was not the case I was forced to reevaluate how I handle obstacles and how I manage my emotions when I feel pressured or when I feel like there's a time crunch. I was then able to acknowledge what I could work on. If I am able to exceed in this environment, I had to acknowledge where I needed to change. What are the things that I can implement so that my time management was much more effective for completing the goals that I had in mind? Also, 
is this something that I actually would want to do long term? Because mind you, the boot camp, the whole point of the boot camp was to get a job as a software engineer. And I had to ask myself, is this something that I feel I want to do? And what I realized is I love coding. I love doing it for myself. Now, if I were put in a position where I it was mandatory for me to do these things underneath someone in a company, would I still enjoy it? Would I value it? Is this something that would add value onto my life? And so those were things that I had to really reevaluate and analyze within myself because I could see how I was responding to this environment. And then I was able to make a choice. Am I going to continue? What am I going to change if I am going to continue? Or am I going to decide to do something completely different? So from there on, I was able to rework my plan and rework how I was going to practice um, becoming a software engineer. So through this experience, I learned so much more about myself and these things that I learned, I was able to apply them in different areas of my life. Like with podcasting, for example, I had to structure, I had to structure my weeks and my days in a way so that I could actually give an effective message, actually give an effective message over my podcast without feeling like I was rushing through things or without feeling as if it was very superficial. Or with working out, I had to learn to listen to my body, listen to, look at my schedule, listen to my body and actually schedule things and decide what was right for me. Not what, no, what, not what Instagram is saying, not what everyone else is doing. It's deciding what was right for me. And I really do feel that with the boot camp, I was forced to analyze so many things that I began to analyze so many things outside of just coding. So I am really grateful for that. And I've realized that I know myself so well now that like the Bible says, my yeses are yeses and my noes are noes. And I mean them because I know myself in a way that if I cross this, my own boundary, if I allow someone else to cross this boundary, I know what those implications are. If I decide not to hold firm in this, excuse me, in the system that I have organized, I know what that means for me. And if I do decide to break it, I will decide to do it in a way that is better for me than what I am experiencing now. So I have learned to know myself in this way. And I really hope that you guys learn to know yourselves in your own way, in a way that can help you propel yourself forward. So again, my fellow students of life, know thyself. Again, my name is J.E. Marie. Thank you for joining me on this solo podcast. I wish you all the best on your SOL journey. Till next time.